It seemed very natural. They, uh, they kicked it in high gear immediately, uh, showed lots of chemistry immediately. And um, I think, um, you know, Jack is such a, I've said it to, to this room plenty of times, he's, he's if not he, our smartest player, he certainly is one of our smartest hockey players. He just has a feel for the game and makes others around uh, life a lot easier because he's so highly intelligent as a player. Uh, but Dylan uh, um, has played much, much better the last couple of weeks. He's trended. Um, he's found his game over the last, I'd say, five or six games. Um, so I think that that fits um, very well with him feeling good along, with Jack alongside him, familiarity. But Dylan's done a nice job over the last few weeks, too. Jack had certainly a lot of practices, but now that he's back in two games, like, what are you watching for when you're talking about a guy who hadn't had a game? Timing, um, rhythm. Obviously, what uh, Jordan just said. There, you know, they they seem to have uh, not missed a beat as far as he, he Paterka, and, and and Cousins. Um, you know, they've they've been in sync. Um, it's impressive that you know you you train, you you rehab the injury, then you train to get up to condition. You have very little practice time, and then you jump in the NHL and. Um, you know, I've, I've said it multiple times how talented and how, how much we miss Jack Quinn because he's talented. And you see his, his speed of acclimation upon entry is, is incredible, um, evident of his talent. So, you know, he, he really hit, was effective for us. Uh, I thought game one, you know, there were some kinks that um, anybody would have. Last night, he, he was so much better than game one already. Um, uh, that, that's uh, very impressive. And you knew there was going to be some rust, but you had, I'm sure, pretty much confident on the physical end, right? You're not even really watching much for that. Yeah. Any issues? You, you know, you. I don't feel I have to watch for it. I thought going in a couple of days ago, I said I will be watching for it. And and when you when you watch us, you're looking at a guy that just looks normal. You know, there's nothing. Uh, there's no stress on him. Um, with timing, with uh, pace, uh, with agility, mobility, uh, with recovery, nothing. No, no signs that um, that this guy's that, that Jack's come back from an injury or is coming back from an injury. Those you'd look out for as a coach and say, okay, maybe I pull back his ice time. Don't want to, don't want to playing fatigued and become vulnerable for another injury or re-injury. Um, and he has really shown no sign. It looks like he's in mid-season form. Um, when I watch him. There are always going to be mistakes in every single game. I was just chatting with Matias. He said the difference he felt against Toronto was you limited mistakes, and the mistakes you made were from hard work. They weren't from silly turnovers or anything like that. Is that the way you saw it too? And Is that why you guys played better defense? I mean, we still had turnovers. Uh, you're going to have those every game, especially when you got uh, Mitch Marner and Nylander and Matthews picking pucks off. That's what they're, they're good at. Um, among other things, but but yeah, it's you. We we I felt last night, and I think our guys felt we were able to establish the pace we wanted to play at, um, and that's a high tempo pace. And even when you're making mistakes, there's layers of defenders that can then pressure and push things to the outside or, or uh, shots that are contested, or which you know obviously the other players hurried uh, when they take a shot it gives our goalie an easier read. It forces them to probably botch a shot more than not uh, so but it all was uh, you know the foundation was the work the compete and the pace and um, you know uh, I, Mike mentioned odd man rushes you know are they contested odd man rushes or is it pushed to the outside where's the shot coming from it's you know breakaways are breakaways those are bad ones obviously um, but I felt last night we pressured enough that uh, there was enough hurried stuff that uh, was a big difference uh, on the defensive side saying that uh, sometimes he's so focused on work that he, you know, he focuses too much on that and he forgets to settle down and make plays. How much is his ability just to settle down heed maybe his offensive surge? You know uh, I mean? Akposo, you yeah. mentioned, yeah. Um, I guess quite a bit. You know, he is, he's gotten, he's made a career on being very, very intense. Um, and sometimes that's default. Um, where you, 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 know, you take a breath, you can see things or feel things better uh, in certain moments. And uh, you know, I think he's done a real good job of balancing that, as you've mentioned. You've, you've even conversed on him, conversed uh, with him on that. 
and I see that he he's done that. I think he's he's done it in practice. That's that's the th that's the benefit of more practices, <clears throat> and we haven't had many. Is you 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 can work on just that. You can you know you, you got your intensity and pressure, but you can breathe a little bit, knowing it's a practice, and just get that kind of synchronization and timing. Um, but he's um, he's certainly done a nice job of that, especially lately. Yeah, we talked a lot about the defensive effort last night, but then you look at the numbers. Matthews has no shots on goal after his goal for the last 52 minutes. Marner has one shot on goal. Nylander had the puck a lot and a lot of shots, didn't score. But what was the effort like against those three guys, given all they've done this season and the way they've hurt so many teams? Uh, it, the effort was a five-man, really a five-man effort. I thought uh, Clifton and Owen Power were really good together. Um, you got a real physical guy with an edge and, and, uh, and Clifton, and I thought Owen skated very well. Uh, three different lines I was comfortable with. Started matching to start the game um, and then felt uh, much that was uh, – Middlestead's line was killing it. Um, and, and then – Felt either one of our, you know, uh, Middlestead cousins or Thompson, felt was skating well enough to track down uh, anybody on the ice uh, and, and, and just contest them quicker than not. And you know, we obviously did not want to sit back. And uh, when you had those three lines skating the way they were, it made uh, it made decisions very easy behind the bench. And the winning streak thing is a thing outside your locker room. I know it's point inside your locker room you string wins together I mean what do you do now what's the point of that just to try to get that two game thing going that you haven't had since the first week of November you know uh, I don't think we're going to think about two games or three games I think we're just going to think about the next game um, try to find a way to be excited about the next game more so than we've been I think we've been going in games a little less excited and a little more tight than we should be and um and I say should be because you, you can't play that way. You can't perform. You can't execute when you're tight. And um, you know, so so the uh, the intent is is to, to you know, we want to play with pace and uh, with some some enthusiasm. And um, it's a, it's a different, basically change your mindset, change your outlook a little bit. The next game um, is in Madison Square Garden, and what a place to play, and what a team to play against. And that's something that you should be excited about, not anything the opposite of that. You've preached before, and so do players, about not getting too high or too low, <clears throat> finding the balance. Um, between two games, you had some extreme lows and some extreme highs. So I'm curious, is there anything in your post-game routine or when you walk out of the arena that grounds you, that you're able to separate and find that balance? I, I'm not sure I understand. Find the balance to, to rebound From, or... A, a really high I talked to some of the guys about yeah. what brings them comfort. Or I, you know, I think you you, you realize uh, every day in this business the score is zero zero, so it's a reset. If you won last night or you lost last night, you're starting at zero, and you, this, you know I don't, it's not hard to understand that as a concept. So if you get too high, you got zero the next day. If you get too low, the opponent has zero the next day. You're you're dead even at the start. So. You know, you, you can reset. I think it's just, you know, bringing clarity. Um, you know, we've had uh, this league is challenging. I've said it a lot. If you're 5% you're off, 3% uh, off, and hmm, there's, we took advantage of it last night. Maybe they were 3 5% off, and we, we took advantage of that. It's just that's the way it is. And But, yeah, I think the league grounds you automatically because you can't carry anything forward. Yeah, I, I I think they're I I feel they're through you know years of watching these guys and him specifically that there is a major psychological component. He's he's a new team, new contract, new territory. Uh, played first time I thought he played against his old team, he wasn't very good. Uh, I think he'd admit to that. And um, you know the second time, I think he he looked at it and said, okay, you know I have had my first game. I think lots of players when they play against their former team, it's a real difficult, emotional, you know, you're, you're kind of sidetracked from the game, especially if you've played there a long time or it's the only place you played in your career. Um, so I thought the second time he played against Boston in Boston 
was really uh, a, a big moment for him. Um, I also thought, you know, the, the suspension had an effect on him. Um, you know, again, he's thrown hundreds and hundreds of hits uh, in his career, never been suspended, and then all of a sudden you do. You know, it's sort of like you're, you know, um, you wreck your car the first time and you're a little bit cautious um, because it happened. And um, I think he, he had took him time to get through that. Um, but we're seeing, you know, the, the recently is a better gauge of what he is. Um, and that's very nice for us to see. When it comes to working with Ryan Johnson, and, you know, he's he's been good about, you know, being able to sit out for a game and get a look at things from up high. But when it comes to deciding which veterans come out of the lineup to, to, to get him worked in, what, what's the, what goes into that process with them? Is it just a matter of how they, their, their pace of play of late, or is it just kind of like next guy, you know, one guy comes out? Whatever the process has been, I can tell you it, there's a chance it's probably going to change. Just we're at a different spot. We're at a different spot in the season. We're at a different spot with everything. So, um, you know, yeah, yeah. You adapt and adjust, and you know we will with that, with respect to that. So, you know, if we feel, um, you know, we're, we're going to try to put our, we're going to try to win the next game. So, um, you know, that was how we made the decision for last night's roster, and we'll do the same tonight. If Ryan or a young guy feel, you know, we feel that it's going to benefit them to just take a step back, and that benefit may benefit them for the next five games we would make a decision based on that. Or um, if you have other players that have, you know, maintenance issues and, geez, they could use three days here and really re-energize, that would really re-energize them. We'll do that. Um, so so that's, you know, that's how decisions will be made moving forward. So, you know, if we did pull a defenseman out, you, you, you may never know, but it might be better for him. He might have a bad elbow and say, hey, we'll give him two days because there's four days till the next game. We know he'll be back to normal then. Um, that wouldn't probably be something we'd be talking about, um, but could happen.